In this video you will find out how V-Ray 6 can be used to quickly improve older existing scenes. For this we will check out the new clouds option to generate more interesting skies, the chaos getter plugin to add lush vegetation and the nmesh modifier to add some additional details. So the idea is to take older scenes and improve them in a very short amount of time using some of the new features in V-Ray 6. This video is kindly sponsored by Chaos, who asked me to demonstrate the process of enhancing existing scenes. Let's quickly break down the process. In step 1 we will use the new option to add procedural clouds to the V-Ray Sun Sky system. In step 2 we will add interesting vegetation using the newly integrated Chaos Getter plugin. And in step 3 we will use the new NMesh modifier to add some additional objects without the need of complex modeling. So my first step was to add some clouds to the sky and before this was only possible by using an HDRI that had clouds already in them. But then you kind of lost the flexibility of the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. So for example, you couldn't really set your sun position dynamically anymore. You couldn't determine your shadow softness and all of this kind of stuff. Everything was coming from the HDRI directly. But now luckily we have the option to add procedural clouds to our V-Ray Sun and Sky system. And that can just be done in the V-Ray Sun itself. So once I enable those clouds, you can see that immediately we have these beautiful clouds showing up in our sky. The good thing is that everything stays fully adjustable so I can move my sun wherever I want and the clouds will always react correctly to the sun position. And they also don't really seem to add any noticeable increase in the render time. So you don't really have to choose anymore between using an HDI or using the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. You can now always use the V-Ray Sun and Sky system and then just add your clouds procedurally inside and everything stays fully adjustable and controllable. Let's now check out some settings of the new clouds and let's first enable the ground shadows. That means that our clouds can even cast a shadow in our scene. And once we increase the density of our clouds, you will also notice that. So with the density, we can increase the amount of clouds in the sky. Let's just slowly raise that and then you can see the effect of it. And the maximum value would be a value of one. And once we do that, our whole sky is almost full of clouds. Now you can also see that the clouds are covering the lighting on our island. That means the sun can't really hit the island anymore. And now our island has very diffuse lighting. And once we go back with the density to a little bit smaller amount, for example, 0.7, and now our sun can hit the island again. And we have this nice, beautiful direct lighting from the sun on our island. The variety parameter offers another possibility to fine tune the look of the clouds and you can just play around with it until you have something that you basically like and you can see the different kind of effects we can get by playing with it. This next parameter is one of my favorite ones and this serious amount adds basically a layer of very far away clouds in the sky and it creates this nice parallax between those very far clouds and those more closer foreground clouds and Overall, it just blends everything much nicer together. Let's choose a little bit lower value so that the effect is not so strong. And now we can also reposition our sun and just discover more possibilities. And always notice how the clouds react to the new position of the sun. You can even find some nice sunset mood in here. And everything always looks and feels correctly. So let's find a position of the sun that we like, for example, something up here so that we get a nice illumination of our rocks from the left side. And then we can also check out some of the other parameters in here. With the height, we can define the height of our clouds. We can move them lower or we can move them higher or even much higher. And you can always see the effect in real time here. Let's leave them at a level of 1000 for now. And then with the thickness, we can make our clouds more thin or more thick of course and all these values are pretty much self-explaining. You can also move around your clouds in the scene using the offset and let's now move them a little bit to the right and now you can see that we have a big cloud suddenly appearing over our sun and then our island basically hides in the shadow again and you can get this beautiful effect that the clouds are moving by and sometimes your island is in shadow or parts of it and sometimes it's illuminated and this creates this really nice and dynamic effect. All of those values are also keyable so you could even add some keyframes in those offset parameters in here and make the clouds moving by 
and also add some for those phase functions, which are responsible for these tiny movements within the clouds. And then also at the same time, you can have the sun moving more towards the horizon. And like this way, create some very nice and dynamic time lapse. For our scene, we don't really need that. So let's reposition our sun and this way finalize our new sky and then move on to the second step. In the second step, we will use Chaos Scatter to add some nice vegetation on our, at the moment, a little bit empty island. And for this, I reposition the camera so that we can get a better overview over the whole island. So before we can start to add some plants, we first would need to have some plants in our scene. For this, we can just easily use the Chaos Cosmos browser. And here is our own category for vegetation and then for trees, for example, or we just use the integrated search tab up here and just type in palm trees, for example, and then all of the palm trees available in the Chaos Cosmos browser will show up. You can see I downloaded some of the trees already. You can notice that with this blue checkbox and I also downloaded some of those bushes and now we can easily just import those into our scene by just clicking this import button. And then if you see closely, we have a palm tree now appearing on our island already. So we'll now import all of the different vegetation assets, all of them in the scene. And then we can easily start using Chaos Scatter to distribute our plants around on the island. So here you can see all of the assets that we're going to be using. And we have four different trees on the left hand side and then also four different bushes on the right hand side. Now we're going to use Chaos Scatter to distribute all of them on our island. The idea is that we do this in two layers. So first we're going to add our small bushes on the island. And then as a second layer, we will add some additional trees on top of that. So let's first start to add the bushes. And for this, we need to add a chaos scatter object. This you can easily do over the toolbar up here. And let's just add a chaos scatter object into our scene. And now the question is where we want to scatter our vegetation. And for this, let's check out our scene. I will just switch to the object color mode so we can see the different kind of objects in our scene. And we only gonna scatter those bushes on this red marked object in here. All of the other part are different kind of models where I don't necessarily want to add any bushes or trees onto. So now let's just move in this chaos scatter object and then just pick our red island object here first. You can see the island is selected and you can also see the wire color to confirm that. Now we can also switch back to our material color again and now dive into the different settings in here. After having selected the target object, we also need to select the objects we want to scatter on that target object. And for this, we can easily press this plus button. And then for now, just select our four different bushes. And then once we did this, you can see that our bushes are now appearing immediately on the island. We can then hide our layer with the vegetation because we don't really need that anymore. It was just for selection and then focus on the placement of those bushes on the island. Let's first rename our scatter object to something like scatter bushes, for example, so we know what it's responsible for and we don't get confused later on. And now we can move on to this surface scattering tab. There we can define the amount of our bushes. The moment we have a fixed amount set to 1000 bushes, I can make, for example, less bushes, just a few of them or many more, for example, 10,000 bushes. I can also define it per square meter. If I don't want to set a fixed amount, I can, for example, define one bush per square meter or, for example, one bush per five square meter and then raise the amount again, for example, to something like 10 bushes or even like 20 bushes if I want to. So now we have a lot of bushes, but they don't really seem to grow in the areas that we want to. For example, this whole beach area is now completely covered in bushes and there's an easy way to remove those. If we scroll down to the area tab, we can define a spline that basically excludes all of the bushes in the spline. And this we can do in this spline exclusion section here. So for this, I prepared the spline, which I'm now gonna unhide. And that would be this spline up here. You can see it's just from the top view where it basically excludes all of those bushes that are growing in the area of this beach. And now we can just use this spline selected here. And then once we do this, we can see that now this beach area is a little bit more empty now. We don't have those unwanted bushes there growing. And that is a good first step. Now the bushes still look a little bit too uniform. So in this transformation tab, we can change that. 
So in this step, you can randomize the translation, rotation and scale of our individual bushes. So let's focus on the scaling first. And at the moment, they all use exactly the same scaling. And I can have a from to range here. So that means in this case, for example, I will choose a range from 50% to 100%. And that just means that some of the bushes now become much smaller than the other ones. As a next step, we can choose a different Z translation and just push some of the bushes into the ground. So like this, it also appears like they have a different height. And let's choose, for example, a value of negative 2.5 meters. And then you can see that our bushes now look much less uniform, more interesting. And I think like this, we can leave them for now and move over to our trees. For this, let's temporarily hide our bushes and then just create a new scatter object for the trees. Then also rename this one scatter trees. Then we also need to select our ground surface. And then I will unhide the trees again and just also add them into our scatter object. Now we can hide our base objects and then focus on our trees. So let's first define the right amount. And by this, I will choose, for example, one tree every seven square meter. Now you can see we have already much less trees. The problem we have at the moment is that those trees are growing in parts where we don't really want them to grow, especially in some very steep areas of the island where normally no trees would be growing. And this is where this slope limitation here comes in handy. So we can define the steepness of the surface where some trees are allowed to grow. And for example, I just define that it has to be less than 35 degrees in steepness and only then we have trees growing. If I do this, you can see that now the trees only grow in areas which make more sense. There's still some trees that I would like to exclude and this we can do again in our spline exclude. And for this, I just need to unhide a second spline which I built. That would be this red one in here. And now we can just easily select the spline as a spline exclude and then also remove the trees in this area. Now we only have to do some randomizations for the trees and then those would also be finished. For example, we can choose a range between 50% and 150% in terms of scaling. And then also move them into the floor a little bit. Let's choose a value of minus 10. Let's see how this would look like or a value of minus 5 maybe. And then it seems this looks quite nice. We can now unhide our bushes and then see how both look together. So that's exactly what I wanted. I think we have a nice combination now out of those taller trees and these smaller bushes. And overall the vegetation for this island looks fine. And now we can move on to the last and final step. So in the last step, we're going to use the new V-Ray N-Mesh modifier to help with modeling some details in the foreground. And I want to add these kind of floating buoys in the foreground so that our ocean itself doesn't look so empty anymore. So the idea is to draw some very simple splines in my scene where I want to have these floaters positioned and then use the V-Ray N-Mesh modifier to place those floaters along the surface in a seamless way and do all of this during the render time so that my viewport is not being slowed down with all of this extra geometry. So for the N-Mesh modifier to work, we need to transform our spline into a very simple surface that also has some UV coordinates. And the easiest way to do that is to use a sweep modifier, then not use some of the built-in sections, but use a custom selection, and then just pick this second very simple spline that I built and that's responsible for the thickness so that we have this very simple geometry here now. And now in the sweep parameters, we just make sure that we generate mapping coordinates and this will automatically generate UV coordinates for our whole object. Now we can easily add the new V-Ray N-Mesh modifier and then also select our section which we want to replicate along the surface. Once we did this, we just need to restart our rendering to see the changes. So now we can see some result already and the default U and V tiling is set to 5 and 5. And this for the U tiling is too much. We can see we have like 5 of those floaters next to each other. So let's just put this value to 1. And then the V tiling is responsible of how often times this here will wrap around our whole object. And let's just choose for example a value of 20. And then I think we already have something. 
So now we just need to apply the original material, which is this one in here. And once we did this, we can see that now we have this nice floaters here along our original spline and all of this stuff is generated during render time. So now we just have one small remaining problem and that is that we have twice the amount of red floaters compared to the white floaters. The reason for that is that this segment here is not really built up to tile seamlessly and we would need to crop it to do it. And luckily we can do all of this directly in the NMesh modifier itself. So up here we have the parameters to define our crop box size. And if we check closely our viewport, we can also see that there is this yellow box here previewing our crop box. So in my case, we just need to lower this Y size of the crop box. And you can see that once we do this, we can easily crop out completely those red parts if we wanted to. But in this case, we just need to set the value here to four meters. And then we have exactly the same amount of white floaters and red floaters. And they also transition seamlessly. Now we just need to increase our tiling, for example, to something like 25 to get a similar kind of proportion like what we had in our initial segment. And then this would be already finished. So now what we even could do is to go back to our baseline and then start moving some of the vertices around and build different kind of shapes. And then this way you can see everything is immediately being taken over in the NMesh modifier. We can really customize our shape here without having to remodel anything because everything is basically stick together in this procedural manner. And like this way we can easily distribute a couple of those objects in our foreground and then just build unique and custom shapes for them. So let's now take a final look at from where we started and then how we managed to enhance this existing scene very quickly using some of the new features in V-Ray 6. That's it for this tutorial. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, take care.